Good morning. Indeed, it is well with my soul. And peace like a river attendeth my way. And sorrows like sea billows roll wherever my lot. Lord has taught me to say it is well with my soul. Good morning to our BRCC Connect family, wherever you find yourself this morning, wherever you are, whether you are in bed, you are in your kitchen, you are in the living room with families. We say welcome and we are glad to be in fellowship with you. Uh, take your Bible, prepare your hearts and minds as we come to. Use this hour to just worship Jesus and talk about what God has for us. Again, today's first Sunday in June, God has blessed us. We will celebrate the Lord's Supper. So we ask the Lord, and we ask you to have your elements ready, your communion, your wine. And those in your family, get them together after the preaching. We will do that. Today, part of our worship service that we've done before, we sing songs, read scriptures. And uh, the message God has placed on our heart is to talk about the, 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 the cry of our mothers across the ages. God is good. God has blessed us with families. But we realize we live in an evil world. And in order for things to get right, God is counting on us, individual Christians, to stand together, to pray together, to work together for the good of our community. So we say, welcome to BRCC. We will have scripture, we have prayer, we will sing, we will celebrate Jesus. God is good. So I ask you to stay tuned and uh, be blessed and enjoy the service as we celebrate Jesus together. Amen. Amen. Good morning, our BRCC Global Faith family. Um, this morning, our scripture reading is coming from Matthew, the second chapter, and we will read verses 1 through 18. So again, that's Matthew, the second chapter, and we will read verses 1 through 18. I'm actually going to read from the English Standard Version this morning. Um, it's a little bit, it's a little easier read. So again, Matthew 2, 1 through 18. And it reads as follows. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem saying, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When Herod heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him and assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them whether Christ was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, and you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. Verse seven, then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the, for the child. And when you have found him, Bring me word that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way. And behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with joy, with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshiped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. Verse 13. Now when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, rise, Take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. And he rose and took the child and his mother by night and departed to Egypt and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. 
out of Egypt I called my son. Verse 16. The inherit, when he saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, became furious and he sent and killed all the male children in Bethlehem and in all that region who were two years old and under, according to the time that he had ascertained from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what was spoken by the prophet Jeremiah. And this is where we're coming from today in verse 18. A voice was heard in Ramah, weeping in loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be comforted because they are no more. Amen, BRCC. And so um, if you would bow your heads with me in a quick word of prayer, and we're just going to lift this up before God. And we say, oh, gracious and heavenly father, we thank you and we honor you, oh God, for this day. Father, let not this day be a day um, that we cast aside, oh God, but let us live it to the fullest, God. Father, we pray that you would bless your people and those that are hearing right now. And Father, we pray that above all else, you would be magnified, you would be glorified. Touch the hearts of the hearers, Lord, and may your word fall on good soil so that it may bring forth a harvest. In your son's name we pray, amen. amen. Good morning, VRCC Connect and extended family. We hope that you're having a wonderful weekend and we are so glad that you've chosen to worship with us today. So the awesome thing about our Heavenly Father is that he is sovereign in times such as these when we have very limited understanding and we do not have all the answers, we can cast our cares upon him. That's what the Bible says. So we can confidently believe that he is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ask or think. Right now, if you're thinking about peace, just know that the Lord's going to multiply that. If you're thinking about justice, he says that vengeance is mine. If you're thinking about comfort, the psalm says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. If you need a rescue, God is our number one lifeline. He's in control. He's able. Let's lift that up this morning to our Heavenly Father. All over the globe, we believe that our God is able. That's what we profess this morning. Exceedingly, abundantly, above all, all you could ask or think, according to the power that worketh in you. God is able to do just what he said he would do. He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. Oh, he's able. My God, yeah, he's able. That's right, he's able. God is able to do. God is able to do just what he said he would do. He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. Oh, he's able. My God, point to Calvary. Oh, he's able. 
she's able. God is able to do just what he said he could do. He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. Oh, he's able, he's able, able God, yeah. He's able, he gets all the glory, he's able. Oh, he's able. Amen. Indeed, God is able. He's able. He's able to do what he promised to do. Yes. God is a gracious God. So we say uh, this morning, we just want to continue in prayer, continue in our thoughts. Um, the coronavirus is not over. It's still around. Uh, we have reached almost 110,000 110, uh, dead in the United States, and the crisis is still going up in other countries. Let's continue to pray. Pray that God will help us. Coupled with that, we have all of what you've seen in the streets in America, around the globe. And like I said last Sunday, we cannot over-spiritualize our lives and forget of the about the reality that is on the ground because God lives, moves, and works in and through us. And so this morning at BRCC, if you have your Bible, we're going to be sharing several scriptures with you. Uh, so get your Bible ready. But um, four Sundays ago, if I'm right, four Sundays ago, we, the world, celebrate the Mother's Day. Mother's Day is a day set aside to commemorate the role and countless sacrifices of mothers that mothers play in our lives, in our community, in our families, and in our world today. Mother's Day is a time for an individual to show his or her appreciation to their mama on a personal level. Mother's Day is meant to make our mothers smile, feel our love in order to make them happy. While that is so, History and current events are filled with incidences that have generated negative emotions within our mothers throughout the ages. Some of these negative emotions were caused by family members, unfortunately, some by outsiders, some by polit political system, some by institutions, and some by senseless and depraved people. All in all, these actions did cause each mother to shed tears of, uh, for those who are caught in the never-ending web of man's inhumanity to his fellow man, forgetting that God created us all and we are created in the image of God. So today, I will be sharing with you, uh, my beloved friends, on the subject, Echoes of Weeping Mothers. Just listen for a moment. Through the drumbeat of history, listen as far back as creation, and you will hear the cries of mothers over the ages, and they are still crying today. Crying. Why? Because, uh, like uh, Matthew will tell us uh, in Matthew chapter 2, verse 18, that was read. When Jesus was born, it says, There's a voice heard in Ramah. Rachel weeping for her children. Rachel's weeping for her children because, and she refused to be comforted because they are no more. Trans, the Amplified Version says because they are dead. Because they are dead. Echoes of weeping mothers. Our, weep, our mothers are crying. Mothers of all colors, mothers of all ages. Mothers across the nation, mothers in every country and every community, mothers who are compassionate and care for their children, they are weeping today. Mm -hmm. 
I come from a community that believes in this uh, common expression. It takes a village to raise a child. The community that I come from, every mother is a mother to every child, and every child is a child to every mother. Because of that, in the community that I grew up in, we always had a watchful eye on each child in that community. So just let me share my own testimony before you uh, 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 decide if you want to stay with me as you preach this message you want to go. When I was a little child, my first impression, when I came across white people in my village, I must have been like four or five. And I just, that remind me that children remember things they see. Mm -hmm. and feel. Mm -hmm. So we have to be careful how we act and behave and conduct ourselves among, I mean, around our little ones because we are either negatively impacting them or in a positive way. So my first impression, there were these white people who went to my village way in wee village in Liberia in the jungle in elephant country. They went to hunt elephant. And so some of my cousins were, were, were asked, you know, by the elders to take those men in the bush to go hunt. Mm -hmm. After a day or so, my cousins ran back from the bush. I mean, terrifying, trying, running for their lives. And the people asked and said, what happened? And they said, oh, the white people we carry in the bush were shooting at us. Hmm. That left a negative first impression on my mind. And then over the years, when I came to the city to go to school, uh, I met some missionaries who want to preach the love of God. In my school, teaching about God and his love. And God took that first impression, that negative impression, and gave me a second impression. Yeah. So when I met wonderful, loving, caring, white missionaries who loved me, showed me how my life could become better, it kind of changed that negative impression to a positive one. And then so as I grew up in Monrovia, and I listened, and uh, we watched the situation in South Africa, where it was white people oppressing black people in their own land, I don't know, that bitterness began to kind of stir up again. Mm. Then I lived in Liberia where the civil war broke out and it was black people killing their own black people. Mm. I got a little bit confused in my mind. So, but in South Africa, it's white people against black. But now in Liberia, it's black against black. Mm. And then we fled and came to America. Then the war was going on in Kosovo. And it was white people killing white people. So that led me to ask God, why? What's the difference? And God told me that evil that reigns in the heart of a man, you know, has nothing to do with the color of the skin. A white man can kill a white man. A black man can kill a black man. If they do not know Jesus and do not have love in their heart. Yes. So it's all about the heart. When your heart is not right with God, you, you will not see people as people, whether they are black or white. Right. So now that I have shared that, come on, let's go to Matthew chapter 2. And of course, a weeping mother named Matthew chapter 2, verse 16 through 18. I'm not going to read all of that, but we see Bethlehem mothers weeping. When Jesus was born, he was born as a descendant of King David. During the reign of court King Herod, who was then appointed by the Roman Senate to, to be a ruler over Judea. And so because he knew he wasn't a real king, and he, there was always a rumor that a real king, the descendant of David, would come, he was always kind of like uh, 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 terrified about that, knowing that when a real king come, the people will kick him out. So he was concerned. So when Jesus was born and the Magi's came and they visited him, guess what? He, he was concerned. He wanted to make sure he was protecting his reign so that his child or somebody within his family will become the next king. So the Bible said he had a conversation with those people. He had dinner with them. In fact, you know, to just make sure, you know, to, for them to get on his good side. And they asked when the child was born. They told him at the start. And so when they left, he said, come on back. You know the story, the, the Christmas story. When you find him, come back to me and I want to come and watch him. And that was a lie. <laughs> and so on the way going, they say when they saw the child, they did all they had to do. They paid their homage and all that. God told them, say, you know what? Don't go back to Herod. He has no good mind or good plan for this child. So the Magi went back to their, to their own country another way. And the Bible said when Herod found out that they had, they had not said the truth to him, he was outwitted by the Magi. He sent soldiers all around Bethlehem and the community to dominate their community because of his own power. So what did he do? He said, kill every boy two years and under. Mm. 
Just imagine mothers locking their doors, trying to put their babies under the bed, you know, put a baby in a blanket, in a basket, just to protect their lives. Think about a mother who carried a child for nine months, hmm. hoping that her child would become somebody. So Bethlehem mothers are weeping this morning. Hmm. Then come on, come over. So Matthew, as he writes, he said, we heard this before. Jeremiah stuck about that. So there's an echo. So come to Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 15. I'm not going to read all that. But again, as we talk about mourning every morning in lamentation, in Jeremiah 31, when the Jerusalem falls, God told Jeremiah to tell the people that the people will become, will, will become slaves, they will go into exile. And so when the book of Nisha is taking them into exile, the road that they travel from Jerusalem to Babylon, it was just near the place where Rachel was buried. And God said to Jeremiah, Jeremiah speaking poetically that when these people and the descendants of Jacob are being taken to Babylon as slaves, Rachel is weeping for Jacob's children. Mm. Yeah. Going to exile, leaving everything. And as a former refugee, I want to put it that way, I know firsthand what it feels like to be uprooted from your homeland. I know what it means to be separated from your family and your loved ones and your friends and the people that you grew up with. I know what it is to walk away from your humble dwelling. Hmm. I remember as Jacera and I, you know, and many other families in Liberia during the 1997 war, fleeing to safety for our lives. We spent 13 days in Kakata. While we were in Kakata trying to plan our next step, you know, as to where to go, when to leave. The living condition that was rough. We lived in a room we, in an unfinished house. We had a room that had no windows. And so at night, what we would do, light a coal pot, you know, uh, uh, charcoal, and put some orange peelings on there because mosquitoes were coming in that room from every direction. I, in my mind, I think maybe there were about 5,000 mosquitoes. And so Chancellor and the baby would be sleeping. Chancellor and Indian Nancy would be sleeping. And I would be up, you know, driving mosquitoes over them, from over them with my hands and whatever was in my hand. And then when I got tired and fell asleep, Chancellor would what? Get up and do the same thing. So as refugees, we understand. But in the process, one thing I remember that God was always gracious and faithful. And he placed people in our way to help us out. So most of them, our children ask us, why, why is it that we share pretty much everything we have with people? Why do we share our stuff with others? Well, we tell them we share our stuff with others because during our hours of greatest need, God provided for us. Amen. God provided through somebody like Famata uh, Jebe, uh, who met me in the street and gave me $35 and said, yes, something pastor for you to buy some rights for your family. God blessed me through Wellington King and Richard Gibson, who helped me help my family to get transported out of Liberia. On our way, no money in our pocket. God blessed us. We met Sister Ophelia Huff. She put her hand in her pocket and put $50 in our pocket, said something to help you get started. When we got in done and it, God blessed us with my brother Caleb Doma. You know, he gave me some phone number, phone number, child, tell us about just that phone number. He said, well, Chancellor's boss is in Abidjan. And then God blessed us with Eric Olson. He gave me $2 and said, hey, there's something for you to do to, to help you with. The $2 we were able to use to make a phone call, plus the number that we had to get connected. And God blessed us with Dara and Glenda Cox, who were missionaries from Liberia, but were in the Ivory Coast. Guess what? We called Glenda. I said, Glenda, we are in Abidjan, but we are full. She said, who cares? Y'all come on over. Bring Chancellor and the kids. God bless us with oh, our own mission mother. Bad Bellinger, who was there, came to pick us up, took the kids in and helped wash Edie's clothes. God bless us with Edie Wells' manager, who was there to make a call and help us transition from the Africa to the to, to. So you see what? God will place people in your life. Amen. 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 So you see, yes. uh, our children have relatives of all complexions. Amen. They have white uncles. And black aunties. Right. When our kids introduce their auntie to their friend and say, This is my aunt Edie or my aunt Gay or my aunt Dyer, they say, How come? I thought you said she was an aunt, but she's white. Oh, yeah, she's white, but she's my children's aunt. Yeah. 
I too have some nieces and nephews who are white. And whenever I want to send something to Blake Calhoun, I say, hey, Blake, guess what? I want your African uncle needs some work. Come and help me. So what I'm, what am I saying? What I'm saying is within God's family network, it has nothing to do with the color of our skin, but the, the, the condition of our heart. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So Bethlehem mothers are weeping. Mm -hmm. Because the children are there in Exodus chapter one and chapter two, around the birth of Moses, we find Hebrew mothers weeping in Egypt. Hmm. Why? Because the king of Egypt, Pharaoh, said that the Egyptian, the Hebrews, are growing in number. Hmm. They're growing in number, and just in case our enemies come, you know, this is, is a political decision he's making. And if our enemies come, the Hebrews might join them. Hmm. So they decided to what? Massacre. They decided to eliminate that particular group of people because they were of different kind. They felt they were there to what? change their way of life. But I want to let you know that whenever you suppress people and you try to oppress them, the Bible said the more Pharaoh oppressed the Hebrews, the more God blessed them. Yes. So what did Pharaoh do? Pharaoh told the, the Hebrew, I mean the Egyptian midwives to kill the boys. Hmm. And the Bible said the Egyptian midwives fear God. Mm -hmm. They will not kill the boys. That's why good nursing right there. That's good policing right there. A good police is somebody who will protect life and not take it. A good nurse is somebody who will protect life and not take it. A good doctor is somebody who will protect life and not take it. A good leader is somebody who will protect life like these Egyptian nurses. Yes. So they live in a time where, you know, pregnancy is stressful enough. Mm. But when a woman is afraid that whether she born a boy or a girl determines the life of a child. Mm. Or when mother, when the mother see a little son or little Sharon, a little Demarcus grow up, she wants them to go to school to be free to enjoy the fellowship of their friends without being bullied. Yeah. She wants them to be able to walk to school and go to work. And so that their, and their, their lives are not threatened. Mm. But for the Egyptian, the Hebrew mothers in Egypt, that wasn't so. But God had a way out. The echoes come over to Genesis. Genesis chapter 4, our first family. Adam and Eve, they had two boys, the Bible said. Even in the family, in your, in your immediate family, there will be crisis, there will be confrontation. But it depends on how you work with your kids and your family. If you teach them to solve problems in positive ways, it will work. Cut down a lot of stress. Mm. So the Bible said, King Abel went to church. And Abel gave his tithe. He gave his tithe. He gave his sacrificial tithe. He gave the best to God. And that's what we practice today as Christians. When you work and God has given you a, a livelihood, when you get your paycheck, He wants you to consecrate your life as, as, uh, uh, as you consecrate your life to God. He said, a symbol means of consecrating our life is whatever God has given you to give a tenth back to God. Abel understood that He did. But it said, King came and just brought just whatever. Mm. Let the church say amen. amen. I hope God's speaking to all of us today. Long story short, Cain killed his brother. And when Cain killed his brother, he left the mother weeping. Yeah. He was weeping for the murderer and the murdered child. Mm. Weeping for the murderer and the murder child. He's a, she's a mother of, an, of, 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 of a family. It's a symbol of a mother of a nation. Mothers in our community. Mothers in our homes. Mothers in our family. There is no way that if you have born children and have compassion, you can see somebody's child being treated in an ill manner and you not show concern. Mm. So she's weeping both ways. Yeah. So... Bring us back to, 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 to the New Testament. We see another mother who's weeping also. Mary, the mother of Jesus in John chapter 19. The Bible said when Jesus was crucified, he was on the cross. There were women who came from Galilee. Among them at the foot of the cross stood Mary, the mother of Jesus. <laughs> she wasn't smiling. She knew all that happened, but she was bleeding on the inside because her dear son, her only son, her firstborn had been crucified yeah. by the authority. So then the beggars will ask, 
Why was Rachel weeping uncontrollably? Like Jeremiah said, after he walks down there and he sees the rubbles and all of what he saw, he saw Rachel there in his the mind of his eye, sitting there weeping. Was Rachel weeping? Rachel's weeping for her children, mm. for our children, for our future. Our children's future, when they are in danger, we should be concerned about that. Children are gifts from God, the Bible said, and we must protect them at all costs. With our lives, with our resources. I am reminded of the parents of little children uh, during the beginning of the Liberian Civil War. You know, I kind of keep taking you back there because that's where I spent the first 30 years of my life. Mm. So the Civil War broke out in December 1989. Uh, the soldiers went in the in the northern part, Nima County, and they raided the villages of the people and raped mothers and killed pregnant women. And, 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 and when the mothers died, Red Cross went in there and brought the children, orphan children, to town. Mm. Looking for parents to adopt those children. And I know for sure there were women in my church who were willing to adopt those children. But after a week or so, the children were no more. We couldn't find them. We couldn't find any rumor tells us that the authority got rid of them so because before these children grow up and retaliate. Yes. Weeping mothers. Yes. Echoes of weeping mothers from across a generation. So why is Richard weeping? Richard's weeping for her children, for our children. That is why she's weeping. They are dead. Mm. Richard's weeping for Trevor Martin. Richard's weeping for Michael Brown. Richard's weeping for Jamal Clark. Richard's weeping for Fernando Castillo. Richard's weeping for Eric Garner. He is just weeping for Brianna Taylor, whose birthday was yesterday. Richard is weeping for Amar Aubrey, and Richard's weeping for George Floyd, and many more. Even for police officers who die unjustly, Richard is weeping. Yeah, man. Yeah. So I was in the Bible study Wednesday night and I asked the women on the, on the Bible study, what do you tell Richard? Hmm. What do you tell Richard at such a time as this when her family is, 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 is on the verge of being eliminated when she's not treated like a real human being when, 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 when her color, because of her color, she's not free to, to let her children go and when she let her children out into the street, her heart is always in her mouth until they come back. What do you say to Richard? How do you comfort her? And then somebody said, just let her cry. It is okay to cry, Richard. Moon for your baby. Because why? You bore the pain to carry that child you love. That child is a part of your life. Yes, sir. So let Richard cry a little bit. We mourn, Richard. Raise your voice to the sky. Let everything lift every voice. This time not to sing, but to cry, knowing that God, God, God values him in life. Yes. So let Richard cry. Let her let it out. Let her let her grief out. So that will not continue with her forever. But another thing that you want to do, uh, let Richard know, is to listen to Richard. Yes. Don't tell Richard to shut up. Listen to the reason why her children died and why she's crying, why she's in tears. Listen and hear Richard's side of her story. Yes. There are many people who are in prison today who are there because somebody wrote a false report. Thank God for the cell phone. Yeah. Thank God for the cell phone. George Floyd, we were told, resisted arrest, but the cell phone tells us that he could not resist because there were six knees on his body. Handcuffed. How can you resist when you are pinned toward the ground? So listen, let Richard tell her story. What do you do for Richard? What do you do with Richard? You lead Richard to the promises of God's word. Like it says in Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 16, said, Richard, God has seen your tears. Because that's why God told Jeremiah to tell Richard and tell the, the, the Israelites, I've seen your tears, I've seen your tears, I've seen your sorrow. Tell like when God saw the Hebrew sorrow in Egypt, he told Moses, I have heard the cry of my people and I am sending you. In Jeremiah 31, 17, God says there is hope. He said, your, your liver will be rewarded. 
Your pain will be rewarded. You will be comforted. There is hope, Richard Cry, to look in the street and see the collective voices of the global community. They have come around to rally around you, Richard. You are not alone. So it brings us back to MLK's dream of seeing his black children walking hand in hand with the fellow white children, you know, to speed up the day where he said, one day we will be able to sing free and lies. Look in the streets. Yes. It's not just black people saying black lives matter. It is black and brown and white male, female, children. Guess what? Don't, 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 don't get this confused. Evil has nothing to do with the color of the skin. Yes. It's the matter of the heart. So for those of us who believe in Jesus, we have to stand together as a righteous community. The righteous remnant to speak truth to power and call spade a spade. So when we see evil, we have to say, this is evil. So it brings me back to my Christian friends who 2016 asked other people to vote for the lesser of two evil. That's what evil does. Evil is evil. What is less, <laughs> you can't quantify evil, folks. Mm. So Richard's weeping, but there is hope. God said he has promised never to leave, not to forsake. God will dry our tears. Mm. In John chapter 19, we see Mary weeping also. Weeping at the foot of the cross. Mary's weeping for Jesus, the one who turned water into wine. Mary is weeping for Jesus who will be blind by Timia's eyes. Mary is weeping for Jesus who said to the, to the storm, peace be still. Yes. Mary is weeping for Jesus who went to Lazarus' grave and said, Lazarus, come forth. Jesus had power, but he said, I'm laying down my life. You are not taking it. And so what was God telling us? As Mary's weeping, when we look through Mary's tears, God was telling us that the cross is a constant reminder of that if we are left with ourselves, we will destroy ourselves in a minute. Mm -hmm. yeah. The cross symbolizes evil that man can inflict on the fellow man. But the good news is that the cross also tells us that God said, in your evil, in your desire to try to ex uh, eliminate yourself, exterminate yourself, I love you so much that I'm not going to let you go. So the cross, in the cross, we see God saying when Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what to do. So what do you tell Rachel? Tell Rachel, go on with Rachel. With Jeremiah said, oh, my, I hope that my eyes were one, like river for me to just cry let the tears come. It is good yeah. to cry. I want to say, it is good to cry. The community that I grew up in, guess what? They will come together. The women will come around Richard and spend some time and sit on the floor, stretch your legs, and just cry and let Richard know that you got support. I want to let you know in the street today, Richard, you got support in England, you got support in Canada, you got support in Africa, you got support right here in Washington, D.C. because yes. black life matter and every life matter. Yeah. Oh, yes. The echoes of weeping mothers. Does that mean that uh, evil will start right now? Jesus said, in this world, you have tribulations. Mm. We are looking forward to, to what the, the better, the, the, the new Jerusalem. Yeah, the 60 years I've spent on planet Earth, I'm not naive to know that when I walk out of my door, something will not go wrong. Come time I get flat, somebody out there may be trying to rob me, but I will not forget that God is still in control. Yes. So if all that we do, we need to remember that God is in control. So if you, have, if you do not have a personal relationship with Jesus, Mm. to give you a second impression because that's what God does at the foot of the cross he gives us a second impression of life and the people around us that it is not everybody who's evil those who know Jesus have a pure heart yes. oh he said blessed are the pure in heart for they shall be the children of God blessed are the peacemakers blessed are those who, who, who will be dusty for righteousness and so Richard weep but after a while, God said, dry your tears. Yeah. Justice will roll down like water. Righteousness will be in our street. Show some love to richer. Comfort richer. Mm -hmm. Work with richer. Speak for richer. 
And when we do that, the name of our God will be glorified. May Jesus be praised. May his kingdom come on earth. Yes. As it is in heaven. Mm. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Gibson. What a wonderful message. Wherever you are, let's give it up for Pastor Gibson. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, um, the psalm says, as the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you. Father, we recognize that we need you. We are desperate uh, for you in these times. We're completely lost without you. And so please forgive us for treating you sometimes like a friend that we only need on a bi-weekly um, basis, Father. But we need you on the daily. My you Lord, are the very Lord. air that we breathe. Yes. Mm. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Yeah. Your holy presence living in me. This is my daily bread. Oh, you are my daily bread. Oh, yes. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Your very word spoken to me. And I This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. This is my daily bread. This is my daily bread. Your very word spoken. Completely lost without you, and I, I'm desperate for you. Oh, we need you, Jesus, yeah, and I, I'm lost without you. We're longing for you, God, just before you. I, I'm desperate for you. 
His holy name. Yeah. Truly, this is the air I breathe, air of holiness, air of righteousness, air of truth, air of justice, air of love. Mm -hmm. So we want to thank God for today. Thank you, Edie. Thank you, Miss Tracy. Thank you, Deaconess Chancellor Gibson. And to our faith family out there, I hope by now your communion, wine, and bread, they are ready. So we ask you to join us. God bless us. Bless the hands, bless the table, bless the bread. So the Bible declare to us, preserve that information for us that the night on which Jesus was betrayed, he met with his disciples as he want to celebrate the Passover. The Bible says he took bread, he broke it. He said, friends, this is how my body will be broken for you on the cross. By the hands of evil men, but what they meant for evil, God meant for good, Amen. for your salvation. So my brothers and sisters in Christ, as we celebrate today, we hold the bread in our hand emblematic of the body, broken body of Jesus for our salvation. Without the shedding of blood, the Bible says, without sacrificial lamb, we will still be slaves of sin. Let's eat this bread together in Jesus' name. The Bible also said in that in which he was betrayed at that table, he took wine. And he poured the wine. He said, my blood will be shared for you in this manner. I'm doing it for your sins to be forgiven in fulfillment of God's holy word. The Bible says, without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. I don't know how God does it, but I believe God. So even as you share that with your family and your friends, or you there by yourself, Jesus is there with you. He shed his blood. It is the blood that cleanses our sins cleanse our consciences, make us love one another, to see humans and treat them like humans. Hallelujah. And drive fear from our heart. And know that God will get us all to himself one day. So let's take this cup, drink this wine together in remembrance of what Jesus done for us. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I bless every household, bless every individual, who participated in this Lord's Supper today. Give peace, comfort, oh God. Open doors for them. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And amen. God bless you. And God bless you. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> amen, our global faith family. Amen. That was a good word we received on today, guys. That was a good word. We bless God amen. for that. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. And Rachel weeping. Amen. 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 Echoes of Rachel Whoa. weeping. Amen. 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 And so um, at this time, our, our global faith family, I want to um, just remind you that um, if you would like to contribute to the ministry, if you would like to bless um, the community or bless our global faith family, Please send your um, donations and your contributions over Cash App at Brewster Road CC, or you can always mail them in at um, Brewster Road Community Church, 16661, 16661 Brewster Road, Birmingham, Alabama, 35235. I'm so full, I can't even remember the address. Um, in addition, you can make contributions over our website, 
at uh, drccbham.org. And then finally, I want to remind you guys just a quick note about why we give. Um, you don't give because I ask you to. You give because God places it on your heart to give. You give because you want to be a blessing to other people. Um, and you give because you know that God has blessed you. So you give out of your love and your um, obedience to God. And that's why we give. We don't give because I, I ask you or I get up here and I make a plea, no matter how passionate it may be. Um, but you give because God tells you to. And you give out of obedience to him and you give out of obedience to his word. Or you give because you want to be a blessing um, to God's kingdom. Amen. 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 At this time, um, Edie will come with announcements and then Pastor will close us out with final thoughts. So, Edie. Yes, Lord. All right, BRCC Connect. Um, thank you so much for joining us for another wonderful worship service where we get to honor our Heavenly Father. At BRCC, we believe in shameless praise. We believe in prayer that heals. And mm -hmm. we also believe in what the Bible teaches. Mm -hmm. um, and on that note, we invite you to our midweek recharge on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. via Zoom or a conference call. You can find this information on our Brewster Road Community Church Facebook page. This is the month of June, and we are celebrating some special birthdays yeah. um, in that of Miss Jeannie Barnes, Ooh. Brandon Prude, Faith Jackson, and Melinda Howard. So yeah, happy yeah. birthday. Your BRCC family happy, happy loves you. Um, we also want to um, uh, lift up prayers for the Bohannon family during the time of their loss. Miss um, Bohannon was a wonderful mentor for me doing during my critical uh, youth years. And so we love you and uh, your family is on our hearts. Uh, just everybody, we wish you a very blessed week. Um, and we hope that this week you will truly trust and believe that God is able to do whatever it is that he's promised he would do for you. Mm -hmm. God bless you and we love you. Hey guys, me again. Um, I want to remind you um, that this week, um, as you're going through this week, and actually we're going to take a second um, right now, but we have a, um, a member of our Global Faith family named Dimitrik that we need to pray for. In addition, we have uh, members of our Global Faith family that are struggling with the virus. Um, and so it's a family of four. Um, a grandfather, a grandmother, a granddaughter, and then the daughter also that are um, right now that are fighting the fight or actually um, struggling with the virus. And so um, real quick, let's just lift up a word of prayer. And um, as we pray, if you know of someone else that needs prayer, then just go ahead and lift them up before the Father as we just pray a special prayer for healing. And so most gracious and heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you and we honor you. We bless you, oh God, and we ask that you would continue to shower down upon Dimitri, God. Father, we ask that you would continue to um, shower down upon Miss Francis and her family, God. Father, we ask that your healing power would flow even now. Father, I was reading in your word this morning and you said your word, when it is sent out, it always accomplishes what it is sent to do, oh God. And so now we just trust you, God, that your word will heal. Your word will bring comfort. Your, bring, your word will bring joy. Your word will bring peace, oh God. And so, Father, we bless you and we honor you. We ask that you would cover our global faith family, no matter what situation they may find themselves in. And we trust you, God. We trust you, God. We trust you, God. And we lean on your word because it never fails in your son's name. Amen. So again, uh, we want to say thank you for spending your time with us today. We love you. I mean, love knows no boundary. Uh, whether you are in London, you are in Liberia, you are in Ghana, all over the United States. I say thank you for uh, connecting with us. It means a whole lot to us. We ask you to share the services, um, invite more friends. And we want to continue to pray for our mothers out there. We want to pray for 
some of the bereaved families, people that I, Chastel and I have known over the years. Uh, it says Gertrude Dick and family this morning. We want to pray for them, for the home going of the deacon. We just pray for that family. Edie mentioned Miss Bohena from Saudi. Let's pray for those people. And I want to say, as we close, there are a lot of mothers out there who are really, really concerned. They're scared yeah. by the future of their children. Yes. Mothers who have young kids, how do you explain to your children what's happening? So, Bristol Road Connect, PRCC Connect, and our Global Faith family, let us pray, sincerely see God's face, yes. that God will touch the heart of our community, touch the heart of our lawmakers, touch the heart of our young people in the street, touch the heart of our police officers, to know that we are all created in the image of God. And we are supposed to be concerned and care for one another. And one day, we will all stand before the judgment seat of God to give account of how we spend this life. With that said, I say, God bless you. We love you. I know you're going to have lunch. I don't know where you're going to go. But take care of your family members mm. on this last day. And we see you next week by God's grace. Amen. Amen. Amen.